All right, in this video, I will be changing the plugs in my 2012 Nissan Pathfinder. No, I do not take apart the air intake. These are the spark plugs I got. I'm gonna do a bit of a deep dive on those in a second. I do have a spark plug gapping tool. That thing's a bit of a piece of garbage, but I do use it. I'm gonna get highly specific on the tools just because I think you need certain things to remove the spark plugs without doing the air intake. So I will get uh, a little bit more deep on these later, but I, obviously I got a bunch of wrenches, a bunch of sockets, gloves, dielectric grease, shop towels, that kind of stuff. But like I said, I will deep dive these. This is a big one, the 5 8 inch spark plug socket. It has rubber inside and I highly recommend you use that. So looking at the spark plug locations, just looking at the coil packs, there's three on each side. There's the ones on the driver's side. All of these are easy to remove. The one that's against the firewall is a little bit more difficult, but it, it's pretty simple. And obviously, if you're watching this, you're probably aware that these are the more difficult ones. The one closest to the firewall on the passenger side is probably, is definitely the easiest. The one in the middle I actually found the hardest. And this one that's buried under some of the air intake stuff is... It's actually not that bad. It's hard to remove the coil, but the spark plug comes out very easily. So like I said, I will do a bit of a deep dive. I'll put some timestamps in the bottom as well so you don't have to watch things. You can jump around to where you want to go. So top left here, the, sp the spark plugs I put in are NGK Iridium 9s. And the spark plug number is LFR5AIX-11. I paid $18 for two and they have a life expectancy of 40,000 to 50,000 plus miles. Again, Iridium 9s. The ones that are actually OEM to the vehicle and the ones that I actually removed, so I don't think that my plugs have ever been removed, are the ones in the middle, and those are Laser Iridium DIL FR 5A11. The cost on those plugs is $16 each at Rock Auto, but if you call the dealership, in Canada at least, they're going to quote you $50 each. The life expectancy is 80 to 100,000 plus kilometers. But that's not what they actually install at Nissan if you just bring your vehicle in. What they're going to put in are something called Nissan Value Advantage plugs. And those cost $16 to $22 each. And I have no idea what the life expectancy on those plugs is. And the Nissan dealerships that I called didn't know either. I've sent an email to the Value Advantage company and they haven't gotten back to me so the pricing on this dealer cost they quoted 2.5 hours of labor so 350 bucks plus tax here in canada in ontario and between 96 dollars and 300 dollars for parts if you get laser iridium so you're looking at between 500 and 730 dollars for this job tax in for the diy cost i paid 54 bucks for parts 35 bucks for a couple of tools. So I'm at about $110 taxes in, which is a savings of $390 to $620. So highly variable, and it really depends on what you wanna do for how much you're gonna pay and what parts you get. But I would recommend getting the NGK ones from uh, a reputable source, not necessarily Amazon. So I also said I was gonna get highly specific on the tools. I used flathead screwdrivers and this is to pop off some of the electrical connectors so I used two different sizes I found that those were helpful so a medium sized flathead and a really long one I used this magnetic picky uppy thing that I got for about five bucks and that was actually super helpful I would recommend not even starting this job until you have a little magnetic picker upper thing I got this ratcheting mini wrench or stubby wrench it's a 10 millimeter i only used it to remove one of the coils but it is beneficial so if you could find one of those i would recommend it i got a whole pack of them for 30 bucks they were on sale they're typically a little bit more expensive and like i said i will get highly specific this thing is three and a half inches long and it was a good size so for the small ratchet i'll show you all the parts i'm using I got the, the ratchet handle, an extension, a 10 millimeter deep socket and uh, articulating knuckle. And that's all the sizes there. So those ones aren't that important. The ones that are really important are the ones for removing the spark plugs because obviously you need to get in and around all of the plastic crap 
of the upper air intake. So for the handle of the ratchet I'm using, seven and a half inches, so it's just a medium sized handle um, and the actual size of the handle is not that important. The sizing on all this stuff is probably the most important here. So I do have an extension and that is about nine and three quarters inch. It, they might advertise it as a 10 inch. So if you got a 10 inch, that would be good. Highly recommend that you have that before you start the job. Again, this is a 5 8 inch spark plug socket, so it's got the rubber inside of it. Again, highly recommended so that you can put it in without dropping the spark plug down the spark plug well. So the socket is 2 and a half inches, and then the small extension that I got is 3 inches. And then the articulation I got is about 2 inches. So when you put all those three pieces together, that is the proper height for this whole thing to be sitting outside of the spark plug well with the articulation, you know, about a, a half an inch out of the spark plug well, and that's right where you want it. So you want that whole thing to be about six and a half inches long. It could probably be a little bit more or a little bit less and you're fine, but you wouldn't want it to be five inches and you wouldn't want it to be eight inches. So that six and a half inch pocket is right where you want that. And then the extender is just the extender. So getting down to business here, I'm going to do the easiest one first. Just so you can see the general way to do this here. The first thing I did was remove the electrical connector from the ignition coil. And then that 10 millimeter bolt comes right out and that's not too difficult. Once the 10 millimeter bolt is out, you could remove the ignition coil. I recommend doing a little bit of twisty motion before you pull it out. But I didn't have any problem with any of these separating like I've seen in some other videos. So for this, I'm just using that 10 inch extender and the spark plug socket and then the regular ratchet to remove it. And again, nothing special here. It's just righty tighty, lefty loosey, and that spark plug comes out no problem. And because it has that rubber inside of the spark plug socket, you're not gonna need the magnet at this point in time. I usually just loosen it up and then work the plug out by hand. And like I said, I don't think these have ever been changed. My vehicle's at 220,000 kilometers, so it's well overdue. One thing you're gonna wanna do is clean up your coils, Make sure they're not cracked, broken, or damaged before you put those back in. And you can see the difference between the two. The laser iridiums have a little nub on the bottom. I'm sure it has a technical term. Uh, and you can see the gap on those there. And the gap is supposed to be 1.1 millimeter, I believe, on both of these. So you can see the one I'm putting in is a slightly different design. It doesn't have that little nub sticking up. But that is fine. It's just a, a mildly different design. Now you are not supposed to change the gap on the iridium spark plugs. So really all I'm doing is just checking to make sure that they're all approximately in the right range. But even if they weren't, I wouldn't be regapping them anyway. And I didn't see any problems with any of the plugs I took out or any of the ones I put in. Although I do note that the ones that I took out have a slightly larger gap than the ones I'm putting in, which is probably because they were in the vehicle for the last 220,000 kilometers. Now driver's side at the front of the engine, again, this is the easiest one to do. Put the spark plug in the spark plug socket, carefully put it down into the spark plug well, and just tighten it by hand. And for all of them, I tighten them all the way down by hand before I break out the torque wrench and bring them to the proper torque specification. And the torque specification that I'm using for all of these is 18 foot pounds. Now before putting in the coil, and I do this for all of them, is I put a little bit of dielectric grease on the inside, just making sure that it's not some big glob of dielectric grease that the spark plug goes through. And then I put a little dielectric grease around the top where it comes into contact with the engine. So very easy, just slide the coil pack back in place. You can obviously see where the bolt has to go through and you can see where the electrical connector was. I'll then put on the bolt. I don't have a torque spec for this, but I just snug it up, nothing crazy. 
And then once that's on, I'll reinstall the electrical connector. Now you're going to notice that I do all of the plugs one at a time. And that is my preferred method so that I don't have the spark plug wells sitting open with no spark plug in them and the potential for dirt and debris or whatever else to get knocked down into that spark plug well. Okay, and that's the first spark plug done. I actually don't do the one in the center on the driver's side. I don't even bother with it in this video because it's exactly the same. Now for this rear one, again, pretty easy. You can see this is the only nuance here is that I had to feed the spark plug socket and the extension in like that. But you can see how everything works there with that extension sticking out. And that brings it right up into an area where you can tighten or loosen that spark plug with ease. And you can see that the articulating knuckle is just sitting outside of the engine as well. So again, I don't show removing that because it's pretty straightforward. But that's the setup. Again, I've already done the, uh, the size for everything, but that's what everything looks like as it goes together. Okay, so on the passenger side, I don't actually show the one up against the firewall coming out. You do want to remove this electrical connector for all three of these and just leave it off until you're done. So once that big umbilical cord electrical connector is disconnected and pulled back out of the way, the one against the firewall is pretty easy to remove. So on the passenger side, now I'll take the center one off. First thing to do is reach down there and remove that electrical connector from the coil pack. A little bit difficult, but not too bad. Then get in there with the 10 millimeter socket and remove the bolt holding in the coil pack from the center spark plug. And this actually comes out pretty easy. This is not that difficult. It does require you to put a little bit of strain on the ignition coil to get it out from underneath the plastic bits on the engine here. But it's not an extreme angle or anything like that. It shouldn't be uh, too challenging for anyone to get that off. What makes this the most annoying one to do is getting the spark plug out. And that's the setup that I went. You can see this got a little horseshoe cut out in here. I found that that was the lowest angle that I can get through here. Just try to get my camera to focus through there. And again, you can see how that articulating knuckle just sticks just outside of the engine. And like I said, that's what I found to be the best setup going. This is probably the, the, the way to get the lowest angle on that uh, articulation at about, I don't know what that is, like a five degree angle there. It's not huge, it's just a little bit annoying. I also found you had to slide the pieces in one at a time. So drop the spark plug socket in and then drop the small extension, then drop the articulation in and sort of build it up like that. And same thing for taking out, you can see me sort of, I've already taken off the extender and now I'm sort of taking things apart one at a time as they come out of the spark plug well. Obviously it's a very difficult tight area to film in as well. This is where I use the long screwdriver as well just to help pop the sockets uh, off from one another and you can see me using again that magnetic tool to reach down for the sockets and socket extensions. And then there you go there's the spark plug out of the center well. And as you can see these are all pretty pretty worn out. So it's actually fortunate that I actually got around to this job. I was actually putting this job off for quite a while. I was quite, uh, I was quite dreading it, but it turns out that it wasn't too bad. So now to get everything back in, you can see I've got the spark plug in the spark plug socket. I'm going to slide those into position. Now I'm going to take the small extension And I'm going to hook that onto the spark plug socket. And I'm actually going to tighten it down by hand with just the small extension at initially. Then I'm going to add that small articulation to the short socket extension. And I'm going to tighten that down a little bit as well. So I'll take this articulation, clip it into the short socket extension. And then I'm going to continue running this down by hand. And just like all of them, I go down all the way by hand until I can't turn it anymore. And really, I'm just looking for that last, you know, three quarters of a turn to, uh, you know, a 
full turn to get it down to that 18 foot pounds of torque. So again, I'm going to go with the long extension through that plastic horseshoe and then use the torque wrench to get it down to the proper torque. Again, this one's just annoying because you've got that, you know, five or so degree angle and it's just kind of a pain to do it that way I found. And then obviously having to disconnect all of your sockets one at a time because they hit that, you know, that big chunk of plastic. It's also a bit of an annoyance. It's not particularly hard, but it is, you know, it's annoying. And if you have really huge hands, you know, it, it'll be more challenging. I was blessed with dainty little hands and fingers, I guess. Once the dielectric grease is on, the ignition coil goes in pretty, you know, the same way as everyone else. Obviously, it has to come in at a bit of an angle, and you do have to flex it a little bit, but it's not a, a huge flex. I, at no point in time did I think I was going to damage the, the ignition coil. And once it's in place, you know, you may want to put the electrical connector back on early. For this one, I put the bolt in first, and then put the electrical connector in at the end. This this electrical connector is a bit of a pain to put on as well, but it's not particularly difficult. You may say a few swears trying to get this on, but probably only like two or three. So this for this last ignition coil, you can see I've got that little stubby ratcheting wrench in there kind of holding it in place with one finger and, and then loosening it with my thumb to get it removed. For all of these bolts, once they have one or two turns loosened, you can get your fingers in there and just undo them. To get the coil out, just lift it out straight, just like all of them, and then angle it towards the front of the vehicle. So you can see I got it there, and then just push it towards the front of the vehicle. You'll find that there's enough room for it to come out like that. And then you can either remove the coil right out the front towards the front bumper or you can push it back towards the firewall. Either way works. You can see me going through the front of the vehicle. Obviously it obviously it fell down through some coolant hoses and then I pulled it out that way. Easy peasy. Now to get this spark plug out, honestly, you can go straight in. You, you don't have to build it up or anything. It's not even at an angle at all. Um, you could just go at it. So like I said, this spark plug is actually just as easy as any of them to remove. Just the ignition coil is a little bit of a pain to get out, and there it is. So you can see I pulled that straight out without having to remove anything. So don't be intimidated by that one. If you're going to be intimidated by anyone, it's that one that's in the center, in my opinion, my humble opinion. So I got sort of the light on. So you can see straight down in there, that's where that spark plug came out of. And again, like I said, I'm not taking anything apart. I got the spark plug already on there. And I don't think you'd be able to do it without that articulation on there, just because it has to go down in, in between a few things. But once it's actually in place, you can see that that large extension is not at any sort of an angle. It's straight down, straight in. So pretty easy to do. And just like all of them, I was able to run it down by hand. No problem. And then once it's in place, just like every single other one, torqued it down to 18 foot-pounds. So to get the coil pack in, I'm going to come from the, the other side, the opposite side that I removed it from. So coming from the firewall and bringing it forward. I try to use this light, but it doesn't help at all, just because it's in the way. The electrical connector for this thing is a bit of a pain, I'll be honest, for this front one. But once again, it's not too bad. So you can see I've got the ignition coil in there like that. And you can see there I'm putting the electrical connector on. So I've got my hands coming from both sides, from the firewall side and the back, and just clip them together. So just going in through there and in through there. Again, if you have huge hands, this is going to be a bit of a pain. Find somebody that has, again, dainty hands and bring them over. I think most people should be able to do this without too much difficulty. Now with the electrical connector on, obviously pushing it back into place, just using the fingertips. And then for the bolt, again, 
you know, it takes some time just like using the, your fingertips to run it down. And then I used the exact same 10 millimeter stubby wrench to tighten it up. So you're not going to see anything anyway. You'll just see my arms. So I didn't keep that recording. Once that's done, obviously go start the engine up, listen to how it sounds. And I've been driving this car for about a week now because uh, I've got a delay in making the video and posting it and everything sounds fine. It's been working great. Uh, obviously put that big umbilical cord electrical connector back on and that's pretty much it. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.